when we were first exposed to multiplication and division, we saw that they had an inverse relationship. Or another way of thinking about it is that they can undo each other. So for example, if I had 2 times 4, one interpretation of this is I could have 4 groups of 2. So that is 1 group of 2, 2 groups of 2, 3 groups of 2, and 4 groups of 2. And we learned many, many videos ago that this, of course, is going to be equal to 8. But we could express a very similar idea with division. We could start with 8 things. So let's start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 things. So now we're going to start with the 8. And we could say, well, let's try to divide that into 4 groups, 4 equal groups. Well, that's 1 equal group, 2 equal groups, three equal groups, and four equal groups. And we see when we take start with eight, divide into four equal groups, each group is going to have two objects in it. So you probably see the relationship. Two times four is eight. Eight divided by four is two. And actually, if we did eight divided by two, we would get four. And this is generally true. If I have something times something else is equal to a whatever their product is, if you take the product and divide by one of those two numbers, you'll get the other one. And that idea applies to fractions. And it actually makes a lot of sense with fractions. So for example, let's say that we started off with 1 third, 1 third, and we wanted to multiply that times 3. Multiply by 3. Well, there's a couple of ways we could visualize it. Actually, let me just draw a diagram here. So let's say that this block represents a whole. And let me shade in a third of it. Let me shade in a third of it. So that's 1 third. But we're going to multiply by 3. So we're going to have 3 of these 1 thirds. Or another way of thinking about it is going to be 1 third times, or 1 third plus another 1 third plus another 1 third. That's our first third, our second third, and our third third. And we get the whole. This is 3 thirds or 1. So this is going to be equal to 1. So you use the exact same idea. If 1 third times 3 is equal to 1, then that means that 1 divided by 3, that 1 divided by 3 must be equal to 1 third. Must be equal to 1 third. And this comes straight out of how we first even thought about fractions. The first way that we, we ever thought about fractions was, well, let's start with a whole. And that whole would be our 1. And let's divide it into three equal sections, the same way that we divided this 8 into four equal groups. So if you divide this into three equal sections, the size of each of those sections is going to be exactly, is going to be exactly one third. Now this leads to an interesting question that might be popping in your brain. Notice we have 1 as a numerator, 3 as a denominator, and we just said that this is equal to the numerator divided by the denominator. 1 over 3 is the same thing as 1 divided by 3. Is this always true for a fraction? Well, let's just do the same thought experiment, but let's do it with a different fraction. Let's try, let's try, let's take 3 fourths and multiply it by 4. So multiply it by 4. So once again, let's see if I could draw a fourth here. Let me do this in a new color. So I'll take, let's say that this block right over here is a whole. I'm going to divide it into four equal sections. So now I've divided it into fourths. So let me copy and paste it so I can use it multiple times. So copy. All right. Now three fourths. That's going to be, well, we can assume I didn't draw it perfect. Actually, I could draw it a little bit better than that just to make the three, the four equal sections actually look equal. So that looks like a little bit better of a job. I'm trying to make them four equal sections. And let me copy that one. So let me use it for later. Now, three-fourths. This is four equal sections. And three-fourths represents three of them. One, two, three. But now we're going to multiply it by four. So we're going to have three-fourths four times. So we're going to need some more holes here. So let's throw in another hole. So this is 1 3 4 Now let me do the next 3 4 in another color. So this is another, that's a fourth. That's a second fourth. That's a third fourth. That's another 3 4 And now let's do, so we've done two 3 4 just now. Let me make it clear. This is the first 3 4 And then this 
plus this is the second 3 fourths. Now let's do a third 3 fourths, and we're going to have to need, we're going to have to use a few we're going to have to use another hole right over here. And I will do that in this color. So my third 3 fourths. So here's a fourth. Here's my second fourth. Here's a third fourth. So in green I have another 3 fourths, and now we we need four 3 fourths. So let's do that in a color I have not used yet, maybe white. So that's a fourth, that's two fourths, and that is three fourths. So notice now I have now I have one three fourths, two three fourths, three three fourths, and four three fourths. And what did I do when I got those four three fourths? Well, it's pretty clear. This is turned into three holes. So this is equal to three holes. Well, if three fourths times four is equal to three, that means that three divided by four, three divided by four is equal to three fourths, is equal to three fourths. So the same idea again. Three over four is the same thing as three divided by four. And in general, this is true. The, the fraction symbol here can be interpreted as division. And looking at this diagram right here, it made complete sense. If you started with three holes and you want to divide it into four equal groups, one group, two groups, three groups, four groups, each group is going to be three, is going to have three fourths in it.